Hi there and welcome to another live chapter reading for Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Today I'm going to be reading Curse of Seduction, The Princes of Purgatory Book One by C.R. Robertson. Prologue, 200 years ago, Ezekiel. We climbed to the meeting place near the top of the foreboding cliff. The trail was narrow and winding, hugging us against the rock face. Our father stood in the centre of a massive chamber that had facilitated neutral talks for countless generations. The walls in the demon realm for the past hundred years had been vicious, leaving our numbers depleted. Balak, Rhaegel, Lucidius and I watched our fathers from the entrance, none of us aware of why we'd been summoned here. We were the crown princes of the four main demon races found in purgatory. The Blood Queen Ophelia paced on a raised platform at the back of the room, her dark eyes finally finding us. They have arrived, she said in a breathy sigh. The massive chamber vibrated around us in pulses of energy. My eyes met Balak and we both realised at the same time why we'd been recalled from our missions. We were a sacrifice. Our fathers were supposed to be brokering peace accords so our people could finally live again and find lost family members. We should have known a witch's dark and foul as Ophelia would never want peace. We were the crown princes of our people, our magic powerful and linked to the original source of magic for our species. Vampire, lichen, elven and incubus. To save themselves, our fathers had handed us over as sacrificial lambs. Ophelia's power slammed into my body, forcing my me to my knees. Ezekiel, she purred, standing over me. You have intrigued me for so long. An incubus with a conscience. She bent down until her lips pressed against my ear. I struggled, but my limbs refused to move. I will take from each of you. Your fathers think your fates will be swift, but I intend to make you my slaves. Each of you will feed me with your power until there will be no one to stand in my way. Each of my friends struggled beside me, every one of us trying to escape whatever fate had been agreed by our sires. I will consume the magic of each of your lineages until I control each of your realms. She pressed her lips on the sensitive skin behind my ear, and I suppressed a shiver that wanted to run down my back. I would show no weakness to this witch. My eyes widened as her lips brushed mine, her energy infusing into me as she sealed her curse with a kiss. Chapter One, Ilana. I dragged the blood-soaked t-shirt and combat trousers off my body, throwing them in the bin. Nothing would ever remove the stench of gargoyle blood from them. My units slowly made their way through debriefing and to the showers. Bruises peppered my flesh and I cursed when I saw the one on my shoulder. It would never heal in time for the feast this evening. It would run down my body and pulled at my feet when I stepped into the shower. Slowly, the water began to run clear. Exhausted, I rested my head against the wall and let the water pound down on my back. The blood clean was relentless, every day forging forward into our realms. We fought, but how could anyone fight against a ghost who commanded an army of the dead? Her gargoyles weren't much better. I've been gone from base for over a month, and in that time, the battle had been relentless. Even my vampire healing and energy had been tested to the limit. A lot of good people have been lost out there, defending the borders. I slammed my fist against the wall and refused to let the tears that wanted to fall loose. We all knew the risks. Every spare soul conscripted into fighting in an endless war. Neutralising all my emotions, I wrapped my hair and bodies in towels. and left the shower area, dragging my weary ass to my room. Attendance at feast was mandatory. Each person dressed to show their lineage. I was a vampire. Human mother, vampire father. My half-breed kind had been sneered at until the army kept being depleted and they were grateful to take anyone they could use. The feast was in full swing when I arrived, making my way to my unit's table. We were all dressed in skin-tight black leather, the insignia on our shoulders depicting our mark, our rank. Something's happening, Mia whispered furiously in my ear, 
She would grab my hand and nodded to a table near the top of the room. All four dark princes are here. My heart almost stopped in my chest, stumbling over its beat. Every woman had that one man she'd give her left bang to spend a night with. Mine was Ezekiel, prince of the incubi. He was sex on legs. Black hair that permanently looked like he'd rolled out of bed. Dark chocolate brown eyes that seemed to suck all the air from your lungs when they landed on you. His powerful body was designed to be worshipped at the altar of pleasure. I'd heard stories about his sex exploits. Mira and I witnessed a woman that stumbled out of his bedchamber, barely able to stand. Her bright cheeks and faraway gaze made me want to force my way through the door and lie on his legs with my legs open. Breathe, Alana, Mira said, squeezing it in my hand. At that moment, his dark gaze penetrated the room as Valek spoke to him. His lips tipped up in a smile that made butterflies invade my stomach. For one second, his eyes met mine, and I felt the full force of that gaze landing on me. It left me utterly breathless. As if he felt my reaction, his grin widened, showing dimples before he averted his gaze. If I could choose my best, my death, it would be with that man between my legs and me screaming his name, I muttered. Mia giggled beside me. He's hot, but I never understood your reaction to him. It's been years and no one can send you into a flat the way he does. I would understand it if you'd been lovers, but you just worship him from afar. She was right. No one got anywhere near the Dark Princess without special permission. The women at their table were exceptionally beautiful, each one specifically chosen to be there. I'd never told anyone, but I bumped into him once a hundred years ago as we were all racing into battle. Sensations exploded through my body, setting every nerve ending on fire. I felt the pain that lived inside him, the constant craving that clawed him raw. I knew that feeling. It was the same one that dwelt in me, demanding I sink my fangs in and drink deeply from the vein. I fought that urge every day. The human concubines entered the room, offering themselves to anyone who needed nourishment. My fangs dropped in my mouth even though I'd drunk a bag of blood before coming to the feast. I couldn't drink from the vein no matter how hard I'd tried from in the past. Father had supplied dozens of blood slaves to tempt me. The result was normally me curled up on the floor, screaming as my insides ignited in pain. I was 200 years old and he'd spent most of that time in his laboratory trying to work out what was wrong with me. Mother always smiled her enigmatic smile, saying I was a hybrid and more like her than father. And he always shook his head at her, mutter out, muttering about his race being superior. She was blood linked to them, tethered to his long life, but their love made me a hybrid and I would never be viewed as a full vampire. Mia selected a tall, handsome blood slave, dragging him onto her seat so she could straddle his hips and dig her fangs deep into his neck. Feeding from the vein always led to sex. It was inevitable when their blood pulsed through your veins. I averted my eyes, refusing to look at the debauchery at our table. The groans and moans were more than enough. The incubi table slowly began to empty as they selected their concubine for the evening. The only species eating food and drinking, the strongest liquor they could find, were the lichens and the elves. No doubt they'd join one of, their, one of the orgies later but for now they were satisfied eating and sharing battle stories. Taking a slow breath, I scanned the room again. My eyes were captured by a dark and bruising, brooding gaze. Ezekiel studied me, his eyes flicking to the others at my table who happily gorged themselves on the blood slaves. His right eyebrow quirked briefly in a silent question and I averted my eyes. Feasts were mandatory or I would never attend them. Everyone made me feel like the freak I was. The scent of fresh blood tempted me until my fangs bit into my bottom lip. I stood abruptly, my chair clattering to the floor as I stalked from the room. At the last second, I felt burning into my head. I turned round to see Ezekiel watching me, his head canted slightly to the side and a puzzled look on his face. The sensation in my chest exploded in a kaleidoscope of emotions that I couldn't identify. Something about the predatory look in his eyes made my stomach tighten and the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. I left the room on shaky legs with a thundering heartbeat. All, those eyes, all night those eyes haunted me until I got no sleep. The morning came too early and I dragged my weary body down for the latest briefing. Mia bounced, the energy of her feeding still zinging through her veins. Lover would probably still be sleeping as his body tried to make up the blood he lost. 
Morning, she stretched. Where did you disappear to last night? I shrugged. I got a better offer than spending the night with you. Her grin stretched her face. What's his name? I'm not telling you. A girl knows some secrets. I winked. I always waited until my unit was in a feeding frenzy before I left. No one ever noticed me leaving without feeding until last night. The blood bags kept an edge off my hunger, but it was always there. Listen up, one of our commanders shouted as he strode onto the stage. We have new orders. Intelligence suggests the Blood Queen is at the south border of the vampire realm. She hasn't been seen for decades, until last week. The Dark Princes have arrived to oversee the mission. They'll be assessing everyone and setting up units consisting of all species for this attack. Training starts in the lower levels in one hour. You'll be assessed on your fighting skills, as well as your ability to work with the Lycans, Elves and Incubi. Do me proud. Me and I, I shared an uneasy look. We always fought among our own kind. Lycans are unpredictable and just as likely to tear off one of their allies' limbs in battle as one of the enemies. The elves were haughty and didn't share well with others. The incubi were the most secretive of all the species, rarely leaving their own borders or asking for help. I grabbed a blood bag on my way down, piercing it with my fangs. There must have been some session last night if you still need blood, she remarked, her lips twitching. You have no idea. I bounced my eyebrows suggestively. She bumped her shoulder against mine. Every day was a struggle to hide my truth. It was easier when we were in the field, as our only food source was bags of blood. The next several hours were gruelling. I lost count of the number of times I got hit by every type of assailant. There weren't enough room on my body for all these bruises. An overly ambitious lichen hit me from the side, sending me spinning through the air. My nails descended and I gripped the wall, my leg arching back to kick him in the face. He's growl he growled his temper rising as he launched himself at me, canines bared. I pushed off the wall with my feet to soar over his head as his muzzle elongated. Fuck, he was fighting his change. That was when the lichens were at their most deadly and their saliva toxic. His claws scraped on the concrete floor as he spun to pursue me through the elaborate training maze. Ah, shit. Lichens were relentless when they set their focus on a target. I quickened my pace, but his change was complete and he was on four legs as compared to my two. We rounded a corner and I felt the warmth of his breath on my neck, his canines trying to grab me. Everything happened in slow motion. Heat exploded in my chest, a supernova that had never combusted before. My feet ran up the wall as my body contorted back to avoid his razor sharp teeth. Light shot from my hands, sending him whimpering back. I scrambled onwards, my breathing erratic and panic gloomed in me. What the fuck just happened? I spent the rest of the day with dread twisting my stomach, waiting for the moment when my commander would have me dragged away for interrogation. After dinner, we all trailed, trailed into the briefing room to receive our orders. Mia bounced up and down, delighted Valak had selected her for his team. She teased me about my obsession with Ezekiel, but she hero-worshipped our vampire prince. Open the oars, she encouraged me. There was no doubt in my head I would be sent back to normal duties. The card inside wasn't the usual crimson of the vampire realm. It was black. My brow furrowed as I read the golden script on it. I'm on Ezekiel's team, I said, through numb lips. He may be my ultimate fantasy, but he was ruthless in battle, taking risks that others would never consider. My wide-eyed found Mia's. Wow, she mouthed before biting her bottom lip. Please tell me he wasn't the studs you had between your legs last night. Only in my dreams. Every single erotic dream belonged to him and him alone. My cheeks flared at the image of us tangled together. Don't be silly, I rolled my eyes at her. Then why did he choose you, she demanded. I should be insulted, but instead I was terrified. Why did he choose me? Then why were there little tremors of excitement beating against the walls of my stomach? I'd probably never see him, but the little voice that guided me in battle and kept me safe whispered in my mind, that I would. If you like what you've heard, feel free to check the book out. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much.